Welcome to Project Combat, a series that aims to realize the potential of RuneScape's combat system. Each episode will explore a major topic, outline opportunities for improvements, and encourage ongoing combat discussions that involve both players and developers. Project Combat's ultimate goal is to provide Jagex with clear, actionable feedback that will drive fundamental improvements to RuneScape's combat system. Episode 1 focused on combat readability, player satisfaction, and player intuition. It was also over an hour long, but I promise this and future episodes will be much shorter and more focused. Design philosophies discussed in Episode 1 will come up frequently in every episode of Project Combat. You might also disagree with an idea, thought, analysis, or solution that I go over in an episode, and that's okay. Community input is crucial in getting combat right. With every episode, we will explore why a current system is not fun or flawed, and define objectives that a proposed solution can fulfill. Surprise! Episode 2 is all about player mobility. I actually started designing this episode before launching the series, so most of these ideas were fleshed out a while ago. It's a very specific topic, and I'm so excited to get into it. Players typically love mobility in games. It feels great to move around in a fluid way, and players can express skill through character control. It can also be really tough to balance. A properly designed mobility system offers balancing metrics to make sure player mobility is healthy and fun. With MMORPGs, we have a lot of flexibility to be creative and provide the player with cool mobility tools. Mobility in RuneScape is mostly expressed through abilities. Surge and Bladed Dive are the two major mobility tools that players have access to. Surge is a magic ability that teleports the player 10 spaces forward. Despite being a magic ability, every combat style uses Surge. Players also use Surge to get around the world and to speed up skilling. Bladed Dive is a melee ability that requires dual wielding a melee weapon or laceration boots. Like Surge, Bladed Dive is often used to move around the game world. Skillers will use Bladed Dive to save time. Honestly, for me, Bladed Dive felt more like a skiller unlock than a melee ability unlock. Benefits like the Mobile Perk and Double Surge Codex expand a player's mobility potential. A player with everything unlocked can Bladed Dive and Surge twice to cover a lot of distance, which feels pretty satisfying. But all of this mobility offered to players isn't well organized or accessible. A player's mobility potential doesn't progress intuitively. You unlock a specific melee ability or buy a codex to improve your mobility potential. Surge can also feel very clunky, and there's no underlying system that outlines what mobility should look like in RuneScape. Using these abilities to get around the map or jump between skilling nodes and dodge boss mechanics is really fun. Mobility in general feels good. So there's a really exciting opportunity here to define what mobility in RuneScape is by solidifying it as a system, introducing unique, class-specific mobility tools, and, wait for it, actually make use of the agility skill. Yes, we have a whole untouched skill themed around mobility that doesn't improve our mobility in the game. From a skiller's perspective, it's odd to require combat skills, especially ones that require combat minigames, to be mobile while skilling. I feel especially bad for those level 3 skillers who can't access any mobility. Skillers will train their agility up, but they're not rewarded with any mobility potential for reaching agility level milestones. Mobility in RuneScape doesn't make use of a skill dedicated to movement. Introducing a proper mobility system can address multiple game health issues in one update. Before I get into my proposed solution, let's outline the goals of a well-designed mobility system. My proposal is just one way of meeting these goals, but remember, whatever I suggest is a starting point for a healthy discussion. Well-thought-out designs include balancing levers that can be tuned to improve game health and player experience. A good mobility system should meet the following objectives. First, it should make use of the agility skill. Agility is a dead skill that thematically fits mobility so damn well. It should be a part of any mobility system in RuneScape. We do want to be careful to not make agility feel like a combat skill. 2. Mobility should be intuitive and clear. Players shouldn't be confused about where their character ends up or how their mobility skills work. 3. Accessible, especially early game. We want new players to have quick access to mobility. It feels good to be mobile in and out of combat. Four. Fun. Mobility tools should feel exciting and satisfying when used. 5. 
progression. Players should have clear milestones where their mobility is improved. Progression is an important part of MMORPGs. Let's use RuneScape's existing skill system to progress mobility. 6. Balanceable. Mobility during general world navigation and skilling versus combat should feel distinct. A good system includes many balancing levers that we can tweak when something isn't working right. 7. Distinct mobility for each combat style. We want mobility to be an expression of class diversity. Right now, Bladed Dive and Surge are used by everyone, which makes combat styles feel less unique. Next I'll go through a design proposal for a mobility system in RuneScape. My proposal hopes to clear the objectives we went through, but community feedback is crucial. The real goal here is to get you thinking about how amazing mobility in this game could be. I hope you will hear me out on the full proposal before drawing any conclusions. Try to not get hung up on a nuance or a small point. We can tweak and polish the design if it meets our high-level objectives. Here's a quick outline of the proposal. First, we introduce a mobility system that centers around the agility skill. It includes a new resource that is consumed on mobility skill use. We then replace Surge with an agility ability that is unlocked rather early. We also introduce a new, distinct, mobility-focused ability for every combat style. All of this sounds drastic, and you might have questions running through your head like, what about the mobile perk? What about my double Surge codex? How dare you delete Surge? I love Surge. I promise I have considered many of these questions, and I think my proposal will get you excited. Let's start with the agility skill and the new resource. We introduce a new player resource, Stamina. Stamina is actually really common in many MMOs. A stamina bar lets developers have full control over balancing a player's mobility and ensuring mobility is appropriately restricted in certain areas. We always want to be mindful of readability with any new UI feature, so the stamina resource should be visible and clear to players most of the time. Whenever a player uses a mobility ability, it costs stamina. If you don't have enough stamina, you can't use that ability. Stamina begins to regenerate three cycles after your most recent mobility ability was used. Certain agility level milestones could increase your maximum stamina or your stamina regeneration rate, with the ultimate goal being as players level up their agility, they'll have access to more mobility. Although 99 agility shouldn't be necessary to be relevant in combat. We then introduce a new agility ability I'm going to call it Acrobatic Dive because I can't think of a better name, but if you have a better name, I'm all ears. Acrobatic Dive would replace Surge. I'll get into the system impacts like Double Surge Codex and Mobile Perks later. Acrobatic Dive would be unlocked at level 10 agility. It works exactly like Bladed Dive does right now, but it doesn't require the player to wield anything, and it does no damage. At level 10 agility, Acrobatic Dive could consume a player's entire stamina bar. At key level milestones, the stamina consumption of Acrobatic Dive could be reduced, or the amount of stamina players have access to could be increased, eventually allowing back-to-back -back uses. We could also do cool things like increase the tile range of Acrobatic Dive. Why replace Surge with a targeted mobility skill? Mostly because Surge is really clunky, especially for new players. When you use Surge, you often end up going in an odd direction, or just don't Surge the way you expect. Bladed Dive generally feels much better, as you have clear control over where you end up. So I'm modeling Surge's replacement around the better feeling Bladed Dive. Now I know there's a potentially missing link here because some of you probably like pressing an ability and instantly going 10 spaces forward. So there could be an opportunity to introduce another agility ability that functions exactly like Surge does right now for those who want to use it. Because all mobility abilities now use the same stamina resource, this wouldn't be a balance concern. The Surge copy would use the same amount of stamina as Acrobatic Dive, and you wouldn't be able to chain them unless you had sufficient stamina. To improve readability, when a player tries to use Acrobatic Dive, the tile that your character would dive to could be lit up to clearly communicate where you will go. That tile hover effect would be high impact for readability. In combat, Acrobatic Dive would consume more stamina, and it would never generate adrenaline. It would also not be subject to the global cooldown. This is a balance metric. We vary the cost of Acrobatic Dive based on whether or not you are in combat. That lets us split skilling and world mobility from combat mobility. 
which provides better opportunities to keep the two separate and balanced. This way, players out of combat can use Acrobatic Dive two to three times in a row with 99 agility, for example, but they wouldn't have access to that same mobility if they're in combat exclusively from Acrobatic Dive. Another cool note, we can now have some really fun Acrobatic Dive animations. Maybe there's some varied animations of how the player jumps. Maybe there's some premium dive animations that are available for room coins. We can have so much fun with this space now. So you might be wondering, what about the mobile perk? Uh, what about double surge codex? Both of these tools have a design goal, and we can translate these design goals to the new stamina resource and retain their effects. The mobile perk's intention is to make your mobility skills available twice as often but players will end up equipping a weapon with the mobile perk in the tick that they need it, and then they'll switch back immediately. This also made the relic kind of redundant because it's more efficient to just switch your weapon. In the new system, the mobile perk or the relic doubles your rate of stamina regeneration. If your stamina regenerates twice as fast, your mobility skills can be used twice as often. However, if a player equips a weapon with the mobile perk, it would take three cycles before your rate of stamina regeneration is doubled. This gives players the option of switching to a mobile perk item to regenerate their stamina faster, but this is no longer a one-tick switch. You have to switch and hold the item. This introduces meaningful choice into perk switches. You give something up temporarily to access the full benefits of the mobile perk. The Shadow's Grace Relic is now distinct from the mobile perk and serves a meaningful purpose. The two wouldn't stack, but this way the mobile perk always provides 2x regeneration on stamina, whereas the switch would be limited by the delay. If you want mobility during a boss fight, you have to commit to the trade-off of either a DPS relic or a DPS perk. For the double surge and escape codex, the design intention is to allow players to stock up multiple charges of their mobility skills. In the context of the new stamina system, this is represented by an increase of maximum stamina. For example, if Acrobatic Dive requires 100 stamina, and the Codex gave you permanent 100 maximum stamina, you'd now be able to dive twice in a row, but you'll still recharge your stamina at the same rate. Because of this, we could turn the Double Surge and Escape Codices into a Codex that boosts a player's maximum stamina permanently. You can use the Codex twice, so anyone who has already consumed both will have the maximum stamina increase already. If you've only consumed one, you'll have to grab another to boost your stamina further. The two codices would be collapsed into the same item, so any existing codices would just be changed to that new item. Increasing a player's maximum stamina has the same effect as a codex right now. It grants players more stored charges of mobility, but not more frequent mobility. The exact values are subject to balancing, but the maximum increase should be meaningful. This change also thematically fits the Anachronia Agility course. You complete an Agility course to be rewarded with an item that boosts your agility potential. All of what I've just said is subject to number balancing. But now we have a lot of levers to balance mobility on. How much stamina does an ability drain? How fast do players regenerate stamina? What's our maximum stamina? Is a player in combat? Etc. It's a flexible design that can be balanced if something is out of line. Let's quickly summarize what we went through. We introduce a new resource called Stamina that is consumed when a mobility ability is used. Stamina regeneration rate controls the cooldown of player mobility. The maximum stamina controls how much burst mobility a player can store. We replace Surge with Acrobatic Dive and potentially reintroduce Surge as another agility ability that maintains how Surge currently works. Acrobatic Dive functions more like Bladed Dive, without the damage. Acrobatic Dive would be improved at key agility level milestones. Leveling up agility could also improve a player's maximum stamina. We introduce readability features like tile hovering, so players know where they're going. We make sure Acrobatic Dive looks cool. The Mobile Perk and Shadow's Grace Relic would double a player's stamina regeneration rate. The Double Surge and Escape Codex are collapsed into a single item that permanently increases your maximum stamina. We now have the foundation of a healthy mobility system that meets many of our objectives. Now that all the combat styles have access to a thematically appropriate common mobility tool in Acrobatic Dive, we can introduce more unique combat-specific mobility tools that diversify playstyles for each class. 
let's go over our goals for combat mobility. We want unique mobility for each combat style. We want to deliver on class fantasy and feel good moments. Each mobility tool should shine in different encounters. There should be opportunities for skill expression, and we want to ensure that these abilities are not just DPS boosters. It should feel punishing to get caught without your class mobility tool available. Let's review some key points on combat mobility. When switching weapons to a different combat style, all combat specific mobility skills are placed on a 10 second cooldown. This is to prevent players from having instant access to all three mobility tools. A player can still switch combat styles mid-fight, but they have to hold their switch for 10 seconds to make use of multiple combat style mobility. Again, this introduces a meaningful choice and trade-offs when switching. Combat mobility skills could still be used outside of combat, but generally acrobatic dive would be the most efficient out of combat mobility tool. All combat mobility skills would consume stamina relative to their power. Melee will have two mobility skills to compensate for their lack of range. Remember, acrobatic dive used in combat consumes a lot more stamina. All of these proposed abilities should have really cool, unique animations that prioritize readability and satisfaction. One very important thing before we get into the abilities, these are high level designs. I'm not going to go into much detail about damage values, cooldown, stamina cost, etc. because these are balancing parameters. Our goal here is to come up with a cool base design and then tweak the numbers after we play test it. Sometimes an idea on paper sounds great or awful, but playing it can change your perspective. So try to not get hung up on a small nuance or detail like the range of an ability or its duration. There's always room for adjustments and balancing if we have a great base design. Let's get into these ability suggestions. We'll start with melee. Barge and greater barge would function exactly as they do now a gap closing tool that gets a player back in the action. We should still address all the clarity and readability issues of Barge that I went over in episode 1. Barge would also now consume a small amount of stamina. Bladed Dive, reworked to have a new effect. Swing your weapons around your current location, then dash to your destination up to 6 tiles away in the next cycle, swinging your weapons again on arrival. This consumes stamina on use. All targets around your starting position in your travel path and around your destination would take damage, but only once. If a target is killed by bladed dive, you regain some stamina and the cooldown is refreshed. Because bladed dive is currently locked behind shattered worlds, new players won't get a chance to experience it. To improve the new player experience and get fun combat tools in their hands fast, bladed dive would now be unlocked at level 20 attack. However, players can visit Shattered Worlds to upgrade Bladed Dive. Shattered Worlds now unlocks the Enhanced Bladed Dive. The tile range of Bladed Dive is increased by 50%, the damage is increased by 25%, and if a target dies within 6 seconds of being struck by Bladed Dive, you recover some stamina and the cooldown of Bladed Dive is refreshed. With this change, new players have access to a fun version of Bladed Dive and more experienced players can unlock the stronger version by playing Shattered Worlds. Melee now gets a unique ability that makes sense to use in combat. It deals damage to lots of different targets and allows a player to recover stamina on kill to let them dive again. Melee gains this identity of AoE diver and aggro pulling. The melee user is the one that's going to dive in first and attack everything with bladed dive in an elite dungeon. Let's go over some nuances and design concerns. Some of these will be open-ended questions because we won't know the answer without playtesting. Bladed Dive would no longer require dual wielding to use. The ability should be accessible to anyone using a shield or a two-handed sword. Although this violates Laceration Boots. Laceration Boots now causes all targets struck by Bladed Dive to bleed for additional damage. This actually makes more thematic sense since a Laceration is a deep cut. Second, you must travel at least one tile for the ability to be used so you can't blade a dive on the same spot. This would just prevent odd abuse cases and keeps the ability mobility focused. Third, blade a dive can be used during the global cooldown and it will deal damage, but it will re-incur the global cooldown. You cannot stack blade a dive and another ability in the same tick. Generally, being able to use an ability off the global cooldown makes mobility feel less restrictive. 
so it's important to maintain that. I do want damage to be a big part of Bladed Dive's identity, but I don't want it to be always efficient for melee users to weave Bladed Dive into their rotation as they can get damage off during the global cooldown. To limit that, Bladed Dive will trigger the global cooldown after being used. Bladed Dive would cause you to swing your swords in the cycle the ability triggers and then dash to your destination in the next cycle, swinging again upon landing. This means that the global cooldown will have almost expired by the time you reach your destination, but Bladed Dive will take two cycles to fully complete. Of course, we can continue to tweak these numbers to prevent abuse cases. For example, maybe Bladed Dive generates half adrenaline if used during the global cooldown to reduce adrenaline gain optimizations. All of these little nuances require some playtesting to really figure out what works best. But remember, don't get hung up on these smaller details. Melee now has a unique, bursty identity with controlled repositioning, and honestly, I'm loving the idea of slashing through a big clump of mobs to pull aggro for your team. Next up is range. We're reworking escape to escape shot. You fire a shot at your target while jumping backwards up to four tiles. This consumes a small amount of stamina. It could have a really cool animation. Imagine a backflip shot. In addition, your next two ranged abilities have an increased range of four tiles. Range now has a unique way of dodging mechanics without interrupting DPS rotations. It also lets them create some distance from their target when slaying mobs or bossing. It's a simple but a really fun mobility tool. Let's go over some design decisions and potential concerns. Escape Shot would have less distance and control than Bladed Dive, but it can be used more frequently because it will have a much lower stamina cost, which keeps it feeling sufficiently different. Escape Shot cannot be used on the same cycle as another ability. Escape Shot can be used during the global cooldown, like Bladed Dive. It could either never incur the global cooldown, or incur a very small global cooldown of one or two cycles. This will require playtesting to see what feels better. We also want to be mindful of animation cancels to keep combat looking good. Escape Shot could also always generate a small amount of adrenaline. We could make Escape Shot either have no cooldown, which would allow a player to use it twice in succession if they have sufficient stamina, or it could have a small internal cooldown. Again, something that needs to be playtested, but in any case, the distance buff wouldn't stack, it would just refresh. So you'd be able to accidentally jump out of range if you're using it back to back. Escape Shot would require a target in order to be used. This is another design decision that can be argued for or against though, and it's again all about what ends up feeling good. With Escape Shot, range develops this identity of short, quick, frequent mobility that doesn't interrupt their DPS at all with a cool window of utility. Rangers would rely on Acrobatic Dive a little bit more than other styles because Escape Shot can only go backwards, but this is intentional. Next up, Magic. We introduce a new ability called Dimension Phase. It causes you to phase into a different dimension for three to six cycles, consuming a large amount of stamina. While phased, you cannot be attacked or affected by any ground area of effects, but you also cannot attack or move. Selecting a destination within 10 tiles will blink you to that location once you have been phased for at least 3 cycles. You phase back to reality over one cycle after arriving to your destination. Some special attacks cannot be dodged even while phased. We don't want people to use an ability like this to cheese through an important boss mechanic. So for balance purposes, certain mechanics could still hit you regardless of your dimension phase. For example, Telos Instakill Bomb. This design is ambitious, but it provides really powerful, thematic utility. Unlike ranged or melee, this ability doesn't provide players with a DPS opportunity, but in exchange, they get a really powerful utility tool. Let's go over some specifications and design decisions. Firstly, players are untargetable, but not immune to damage while phased. If they are hit with a bleed before phasing, they will continue to bleed while phased. However, a mechanic like Carapax Wall would not damage a phased player. Dimension Phase can be used during the global cooldown, but not in the same cycle as another ability. You will always be considered in combat while phased. Players must be phased for at least a total of four cycles. Three on start, and one after you blink. So to summarize, 
you immediately phase and become untargetable when the ability is used, but you're locked in place for at least three cycles. While phased, you can select a destination. After at least three cycles have passed, you'll blink to the chosen location and phase back over one cycle. You are able to eat or drink potions while phased, and you'll blink to the most recently selected location if you haven't already blinked. So if you misclick, you still have a couple cycles. A player can be phased for up to six cycles, but if no destination is chosen, they will blink to a random, valid location nearby. This forces mobility on every cast so that the stamina consumption makes sense. Again, this is an ambitious design, and it might sound overpowered or broken, but we won't really know until it's playtested. Maybe this ability is bonkers and breaks the entire game. Maybe the DPS cost makes it not worth using, and we have to reward players with some sort of DPS or utility effect to justify its use. Maybe it's too useless in non-bossing situations, and it feels bad for Slayer. But because the ability has metrics like stamina cost, cooldown, DPS lockout time, and exceptions to taking damage, if everyone thinks that the design is cool, it can be balanced by shifting those numbers. Maybe Dimension Phase does different things based on your active spell. There's a ton of design space here to do really cool things. We've now introduced three unique abilities that support different playstyles, are thematic and fulfill a fantasy, have opportunities for cool animations, are designed to make the player feel good when used correctly, can allow players to express a lot of skill and character control, and clears up a lot of the clunkiness around current mobility, which largely comes from Surge. We outlined important goals for a general mobility system and combat mobility. My proposal is one possible design, but it's just the start of the conversation. I'm not a perfect designer, and I'm confident that my design has tons of flaws. But the examples hopefully show everyone the potential that RuneScape has, and how we can incorporate the ideologies from Episode 1 into any ability or system that we create. There's also a lot of unexplored questions like, how much stamina is too much? What does the balancing look like for each mobility style? Should the combat mobility abilities have agility requirements? These are all debatable topics, but again, if we have a good base design, we can answer these by tweaking metrics like stamina consumption, regeneration, and cooldowns. With this proposal, we can revive agility, improve class diversity, adhere to player satisfaction and readability, provide new players with exciting combat tools early, and implement the necessary balancing levers to keep power levels in check. That's it for this episode. If you want to get involved in Project Combat, discuss this video and proposal, and even contribute to Episode 3, join the Project Combat Discord server found in the description below. Thank you for watching.